This isn't my meat and potatoes Midwestern diet. Where, what is this strange thing called sushi or, you know, whatever it is, that's another opportunity for us to, to become just aware of, of what that belief system is. So, thank you for that question. That's, that's, that's a good question in case some of you didn't hear it when the wind was rippling through there. He said, so if you follow that out, he said that, that would mean you wouldn't be attached to teaching. And I, I say, exactly. There was a time when I was working with the Course, back in the 1990s, when people started to to kind of show up and they would start to say things like, I am your student. Yes. And I thought, how interesting. Uh, it's an interesting concept. But I thought back to the, to the teacher's manual of A Course in Miracles where it talks about really that, that we're all teaching and learning all the time. But it would talk about teachers and students or occasionally uh, like a therapist and patient or things like that. It would imply a seeming difference in roles, even though the whole teaching was that there really wasn't any difference at all. And then, the more I, I just flowed with it, I spent time with the so-called students for quite a while, and then I spent time going to all these countries and, and giving these talks and so forth, but even when I was answering emails or giving talks, the feeling was, was that, that I really was not identified with that teaching role anymore. And therefore, really had no desire for even using the metaphor anymore. So I would have people, like about two years ago, somebody wrote to me from Australia and they said, Can I come and study with you? I don't even read anymore, other than, you know, glancing at the newspaper or glancing at the, the web for internet access for emails and this and that. Study with me. Uh, What's that even mean? I don't, I don't study uh, anymore. I don't study anything. I've, I spent my whole life on learning. I had 10 years of university. I had plenty of study, believe me. And I'm, I was ready to reverse and let go of that whole story and concept. So, at that point, it was like when this person wrote, I want to come and study with you. I want to be your student in this. And I just wrote back, uh, well, I hope to meet you along the way, but I don't use that metaphor anymore. And experientially the way that it came to me was that, that teaching is thinking. And of course we're thinking all the time. And everything we think and say and do, Jesus says, teaches all the universe. So even though my mother had been a teacher, even though I had been in university a teaching assistant and then did some work as, as a professor and so on and so forth, that whole concept just kind of got popped. Like one of those soap bubbles that, you know, you blow the bubble and you just watch it go for a while in the sun and then it just kind of pops. So, I don't feel any kind of sense of um, any role with it. I was told by Jesus at the very beginning in 1991, Jesus said, you will not have a career. Uh, any kind of career. You will not have a spiritual career. So that fit in with the idea of just accepting donations and not, you know, charging money just to help support the travels and, and you know, the basic cost and things that are needed uh, to pay the electric bill or, you know, for whatever was necessary. I would accept donations, but I would cease from, you know, having fees and so on and so forth. And that's another thing that's part of this uh, like non-teaching role. I just show up and um, I never know what's going to happen. I don't know whether I'll be talking, whether we'll just be eye-gazing. Uh, sometimes I'll do one-on-one -on -one sessions and one person will show up for a half an hour one-on-one -on -one session and they'll say, I really don't want to talk to you and I don't want to hear you either. But I want to just eye-gaze for a half an hour. I say, okay. And we sit there silently and eye gaze for a half an hour. Then the next person may come in highly intellectual with lots of questions and we talk for half an hour and anything in between. Uh, but it's, it's not for me a sense of a, of a role. And I don't really, I don't even feel like um, 
I don't even know how much longer this will continue. Um, I was just in Honolulu and I got to meet two of these pioneers of A Course in Miracles that took the course all over the world in the early days, I call it, prior to two decades ago, Luckett's, uh, Jack and me and Lily Luckett. And I had crisscrossed with them, I'd heard their names when I traveled around the world for many years, and they were like 75 and 80 years old. And then finally we were having this beautiful dinner together and Jack just looked over at me and he said, You will not be traveling much longer. And I said, Okay. And then he looked over at Jason and Helena and Kirsten and said, And you, you will be. <laughs> and so it was like this prophecy or something we were all like, Okay. Yeah, that, I don't know, that may come to pass. Uh, but I really have no investment in it at all. Exactly, yeah. Even, even during those final scenes where, where Pontius Pilate was like saying, Don't you know who I am? And don't you know that I have the power to put you to death or to release you? Almost like he was offering him this major thing in the world. Uh, and Jesus' answer was, You would have no power over me unless it was given uh, from above. In other words, all he realized was that he was sourced, he had his total life and existence in and through God, and only God, and that nothing of the world, no, no political uh, person, no, no thunderstorm, no, nothing of this world could, could give him anything or take anything away. And it really, to me, it's, it really fits in with that being the meek shall inherit the earth. I really feel like Jesus explained that very well in the Course where he says, the meek shall inherit the earth because they shall overtake it with their strength. Meaning overtake it, overtake the perception of it with the strength of their mind. Because that's where the world's coming from, it's coming from the mind. So for me that was, that's been very important. Um, over the years, you know, people could say things, could write things, even physically seem to assault the body of David. And I did have, have that happen actually one time, and I, I was like so far above it that I, I didn't even feel anything uh, during what seemed to be an assault. And it turned into this huge forgiveness lesson. Uh, not so much, I mean for me, forgiveness is always the lesson to just stay in that state of mind, but also for the one that seemed to go through it, he had, it was like his heart cracked open and he had a huge, like a sense of remorse and a sense of, of healing that came from that very experience. And I've had cars disappear uh, when I've been traveling, uh, people disappear, you know, it's it's been a lot of good practice at, at just being focused and being present. And I can certainly relate to what you're talking about because that's exactly that Christ mind experience that Jesus was demonstrating. That be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You know, that's exactly what, what this is all aiming at.